I remember a couple of years ago, this candle in the United States, which disappeared as soon as it appeared, uh, about uh, Donald Trump, which at the time was a presidential candidate, having his phone wire tapped. Uh, and as I mentioned before, like the scandal just vanished. And now it appears that it was true. Like the FBI was actually listening in and uh, it turns out that uh, if you say Obama, which was the president at the time, knew about it, it's a, a conspiracy theory. And I absolutely think that, yes, it is a conspiracy theory. Yes, people do conspire. I do not know when conspiracy theory became just a thing that you can claim and just dismiss the accusation. As if never throughout history of mankind, people have ever gathered together in order to conspire for political gain or for financial reasons. No, it, it absolutely never happens. Like more than one person never gets into the same room in order to try to do something illegal uh, while having more people in on it. it. It never happens. You know, when you say conspiracy theory, you talk about Bigfoot aliens and the X-Files. Yeah, uh, I personally am not going to talk about Obamagate that much. I know many of you might be disappointed. And, uh, I, I do get a lot of requests for people asking me to talk about it and I'm going to have to say, well, you're going to get, have to get better YouTubers that are informed into this because uh, it disgusts me. It absolutely disgusts me and I will tell you why. Uncovering corruption in the United States is completely useless. I got blackpilled on it since the Jeffrey Epstein case. I mean, the first time the man gets convicted, the sentence was absolutely laughable. Any other person in his situation would have got many years in jail. But no, he, he gets like a light sentence, a slap on the wrist. And then the second time he gets convicted, and it seems that he might be talking about conspirators and other people that he knows that were implicated in trafficking. Well, all of a sudden we are being sold this story from a B-rated movie that not only did he kill himself, but the camera in, in his prison didn't function. And the two guards were asleep and other such nonsense. It's like, all right, you sell that to the public. And then you find out that one of the mainstream media outlets, uh, Megyn Kelly did a very good interview on this on YouTube, but one of the biggest mainstream media outlets had a very good interview years before, and they didn't want to air it. Like the palace from the United Kingdom called in and decided to uh, threaten them about airing it. And, you know, it's, it's being pulled off the air. And when you have footage, a hot mic footage of the person working at the media and, and talking about it, what does the conglomerate do? Well, they start fi figuring out who might have leaked the footage and start firing them rather than actually releasing the interview. It's insane. And because people didn't go out and protest, because people just don't seem to care about it, it's something that's a meme right now. It's something to be laughed and joked about. Yeah, I have no faith that uh, if you uncover corruption, in the American system, people will actually, you know, do something about it. People might actually protest or someone that's guilty might actually end up in jail. It's also kind of hilarious that uh, here in Eastern Europe, we're accused of being corrupt. While people in the West, they're considered of operating on principles and morals and rule of law and uh, their institutions are sacred. Uh, in reality, I just think that here in Eastern Europe, people just admit of being corrupt. Like they go on camera and they say, yeah, I did it. Yeah, no, I'm corrupt. Yeah, what you gonna do about it? In other places like the United States, it seems that the corruption is a little, a little bit hidden. Uh, and when it's discovered, the press will go into damage control mode and um, nothing will happen. Like the story just silently gets dropped. Uh, sometimes you might get some social media collusion by punishing people that talk about anything that's not in the mainstream media. And that's about that. You know, in a couple of months, it just all blows away. No one gets arrested, no one gets punished, and the world moves on like it has never happened. So, no, like, again, like, if, if, I, I use Jeffrey Epstein because I don't think anything more sickening than hurting kids. And if you can, like, like you have... In this case, you had reporters both from the left and the right. Like there were people working at the New York Times. There were blue check marks on Twitter that were on the left and people on the far left and, you know, people on the right and people on the far, like everyone throughout the political spectrum. It was a bipartisan issue. No one bought the story. It was ridiculous. It became a meme.
and yet nothing was done. No amount of different investigations, no, no, nothing, just was dropped. Or well, maybe, maybe something is being done and it's not being told to the press, but I've yet to see it. Yeah, so, so in the case of uh, the uh, Obama gate, I suppose, it's uh, something very similar now. Uh, it's being labeled a conspiracy theory as if that dismisses the issue. Um, they're trying to portray the institutions like it's it's unimaginable. The left <laughs> during the Bush era, like they would consider the FBI to be corrupt. They would consider these institutions to be untrustworthy, like the X-Files. The X-Files is an entire TV show which operates on the premise that the, the, <laughs> the FBI is corrupt. Uh, but no, apparently, no, these institutions are 100% sacred and, and there, there is no way to, to corrupt them. Like the mainstream media will admit that cops can be corrupt, that a cop can go into a person's car, put a little package of weed there and then go like, look what we found, ah, you're going to jail. I mean, even South Park made an episode about that. So no, they admit that corruption can exist. But the moment you go to institutions like the FBI, they're like, oh, no, it, it can never happen. No, no, no. As if the people at the FBI aren't human. Like, only the cops are human. Or, or maybe they consider the cops to be a lower life. I, I don't know. I can't explain it. But it's, it's really bizarre, like, that way of thinking. No, corruption can exist everywhere. And whenever you hear a whiff of it, you're supposed to do an investigation. You're supposed to make an investigation to find out how it happened. But no, like it seems the damage control is like it's a conspiracy theory. Every single accusation, like literally every single accusation against an institution is a conspiracy theory. And if you talk about it, you need to be shut down. Uh, like, like the idea is to paint the people that talk about it as crazy and insane. Meanwhile, if like uh, Trump worked with Russia, that is not a conspiracy theory, no. Like, I remember the, the time I heard uh, at, at some press statement, because I wanted to make a video, and I was like, oh, fuck this shit. Uh, some representative of the FBI said, oh, we cannot prove that the person is being innocent. It's like, since when? Since when can you prove innocence? Like, that is not something that throughout the world people do, unless under communism, I guess. Like, yes, under a communist system, the courts were to prove innocence so they can let the guy go because it was guilty until proven innocence. In the West, it's innocent until proven guilty, so it's not your job to prove innocence. If you can't prove he's guilty, then you assume he's innocent. And these, these things just it anger me. It was like putting me in a bad mood. And it's like, okay, why, why even cover them? Like, what, what's the point, you know? Um, so what, what, what happened to this guy is it's just abhorrent. And again, like the media is pretending that they do not understand how the American justice system works, which, by the way, I'm not, I'm not saying it's broken, but there aren't justice systems in the world that are perfect. Like the American justice system, for example, operates on the pre premise of not clogging the courts so that the courts of justice can be open. Meanwhile, here in Europe, it's a little bit different. But basically, people are pressured into getting a plea deal. Most cases in the United States do not even go to court, which is, in my opinion, a shame because... As you can see here, right, like take Michael Flynn, for example, you need to understand how the justice system works. You get pressured to get a plea deal and um, the person that's pressured, they, they look at what happens if I take the plea deal, what happens if I don't. If you don't take the plea deal, they can put you under investigation for years. You're going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on lawyers. You're going to have them comb through everything that you did in, in your entire history. For example, you jaywalked once or like Kavanaugh, you, you drank a couple of beers 30 years ago. They can go through those. They can give you a gag order so you don't talk about it. Meanwhile, they can leak it to the press constantly. They can even talk to the press constantly and put you under accusation and tarnish your entire name. Versus the alternative, you take the plea deal, maybe you got a couple of weeks in jail, maybe a couple of months. Lying to the FBI isn't the greatest crime in the entire world, right? It's not like it's treason or anything like that. It depends in the plea deal how much they give you. And apparently in this case, if it was political, they don't even care if the guy goes to prison or not. They just want to have him admit that he lied to the FBI so they can move over to, you know, accuse Trump of colluding or whatnot. And, and you know, Trump colluding is not a conspiracy theory. It's 100% no collusion. So, so yeah, like that, that's literally it. That, that is the conversation that should have been had in the press. Like the guy didn't go in front of a judge and a jury. And you, you know what's interesting? 
I noticed this into the minds of Americans is quite different than to the minds of Eastern Europeans. The idea of a confession uh, in Eastern Europe used to be considered the queen of all evidence. Like if a person confesses, done deal. It's not like that after communism anymore, though, because a lot of people realize the abuses that the communists did in the justice system. And right now in Europe, if you just have a confession, you cannot go to prison. Like they need something else besides a confession. Because here's the thing. There are many reasons why people confess. One of them is this one that I just said. Another reason why people can confess is like literally they take you to the police station and they beat you up like the communists used to do. And they beat you up in a way so that it doesn't leave signs. You know, it, it not, not necessarily like they can put your fingers through the door, but they can, you know, put a potato bag over your chest and start beating you. It's not going to leave marks. Sorry, not chest, your belly. Uh, th there's other way. Like they knew how to do it. And then people confess so they can get rid of that. Uh, they can threaten someone that you love or, or a family member or something like that. So you confess in order to protect them. Um, but it can also be that the criminal himself confesses in order to cover for someone else. So let's say a friend of mine did a crime and I want to defend them all. I confess now. So you need more than a confession. You need some evidence. You need, you need something concrete. If I go to the cops right now and I confess to something and I do not bring a body or anything, they're not going to arrest me. They, they, they can, you know, decide that, all right, you're going to spend the night in jail while they investigate, but they cannot imprison you. They cannot convict you for it. The judge cannot find you guilty just by a confession. And we, need, uh, we needed a couple of decades of communism to figure that out. In America, at least in the mind of the public, it seems that if someone confesses, it's a done deal. It's like, okay, that's it. He confessed. Yeah, it's, it's not so simple. But anyway, it's, it's going to be at least hilarious to see the press now scurry on and go like, oh, this distracts us from the virus. This distracts us from the number of deaths that Trump is responsible for. As if Trump is uh, Lord of Plague, Nurgle, Master of Disease or something like that. You know, like as if the pandemic is not some natural disaster that you can't, you can't have like an army of Jesus Christ just curing and healing people. Yeah, it, it, it's ridiculous. Like they, they do not. Uh, like, I, I look at this and they always blame the U.S. president for the deaths, but not the state representatives. Like, isn't the? I'm not that familiar with American politics, but in this case, doesn't the uh, governor of a state have actual responsibility regarding his state? I mean, yeah, sure, Trump can give some money, can uh, organize a couple of resources, but at the end of the day, isn't the state governor that? can issue the lockdown orders and other things like that. Hmm? I, I mean, just curious. I'm, I'm literally dying to know. Uh, and you know, like this, this also implies that it's never possible to talk about two things at once. Like you cannot talk about the virus and also talk about the Obama gate. It's like the, the mind of the mainstream media, you know, given how many mainstream media conglomerates are in America. They, they cannot focus on two things at once. It's just like either Obamagate or the virus. And both at once can never happen. Like one scandal at a time, please. You know, like, no, seriously, American politics is absolutely laughable. Like, I, I look at the Democratic nominee, Joe Biden. I haven't talked about American politics in a while. But for an Eastern European, it's so obvious that it's corrupt. Like, the moment you see someone like Joe Biden as the choice for the entire left wing in the United States is, is a mockery of the system. Like you're telling me you couldn't find a better person. Even Bernie Sanders was a better person. It, it, but, but no, it's Joe Biden. Like the guy is at this point a sock puppet, a living sock puppet. Like whomever puts his hand in his ass is going to do that. Like you, you can't show me a geriatric patient in front of the cameras and say, you know, this is the best guy we could find. You couldn't find anyone else. Like anyone else. Like, it's like, you know, like, and it reminds me when the right-wingers were pushing for Sarah Palin, but at least they had the common decency in order to make her vice president. It's, 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 it's bewildering, you know, like, it's insane. But again, like, it's going to be important to see who's going to be the vice president of Joe Biden, because that, that's probably the guy that the left is going to expect to take over at some point. No, it's, it's ridiculous, you know, like, the, when you see... It's the same like in Eastern Europe. It's like the most corrupt possible politician is being presented as an option for the public. Well, in the United States, it's not the most corrupt. It's uh, 
The most not there, let's put it like this. The most not there president. It's, it's so bad that there are memes on the internet. Like there are actual memes on the internet mocking the issue. Yeah, so no, that's my thought on American politics. Uh, it's uh, very upsetting to talk about because as an Eastern European, you know, you look towards America as a beacon of light, as a beacon of hope. It's like uh, the way we strive to be. But no, you see a country that's uh, just as corrupt as mine. It's just that people hide it better. And when the corruption is being exposed, no one does anything about it. So, you know, like, why, why even talk about it? Like, what's the point in that situation? If this carries on, it's going to be exactly like my country. Like, you're going to have American politicians just admit that they're corrupt. Like, in front of the cameras. Yeah, yeah, no, we did it. Yeah, so what? So what? Like, that, that's literally the, the, the next step. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's really funny. As if the mainstream media that has covered Russia Gate scandal constantly, nonstop, is going to now admit, yeah, you know what, we were wrong, we did a noopsie. Yeah, no, it seems that uh, the real story was about uh, what happened during the Obama administration. Not, not to mention, like, they want the public to believe that the President Obama was completely unaware, completely in the dark for eight years. He had absolutely no idea what is going on. But at the same time, the U.S. President, the current U.S. President Trump, is so knowledgeable about the virus and every single death that happens is his personal responsibility. Like, literally, that's, that's what they're selling to the public right now. And there are people that are lapping it up. 